All right, good morning, everyone. Um, today, we are going to look at a topic of friction. And friction is the study of um, what happens when two surfaces um, are meshing together and you want to get one of the sub, uh, substances to move. So the resistance of a movement is what we regard as friction. Excuse me, we're not gonna go into details since we are only doing a revision. So I'm gonna ask us to just go right into it. So in this um, topic, we're gonna be covering friction on a horizontal surface. It's just friction on a horizontal surface. We're gonna look at the incline. And uh, the same method that we are going to be using here is our same one that we're gonna be using for a incline. So as you can see in this picture here, um, I think the first thing that we need to look at is that um, the force applied here is always in the opposite of the friction or the friction always opposes um, the, the force that is applied. And there are other two forces that are also equal. The normal force, which we are going to uh, regard as NR in our calculations. And then we have a gravitational force, which is going to be W in our uh, calculations. Now, um, the applied force here, there are two types of these forces which are applied. Um, remember, applied force would be equal to the frictional force because we are talking about a constant movement of this object. Um, it's not accelerating. Second thing is that um, we are talking about this object in equilibrium. So if it's not accelerating, we are talking about it in equilibrium, meaning that NR is equal to W as well as F, let's say applied, is equal to frictional force for equilibrium purposes, right? Now, what else that we need to note about this is the fact that frictional force is a passive force. In other words, it doesn't increase. The force that can only increase is the applied force until it matches the frictional force, then the object will begin to, to move. So when an object begins to move, it simply means that all applied force and the frictional force are, are equal. Now, um, there are two types of um, forces that we, 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 we need to overcome for an object to move and keep moving. For example, if you want to get this object to just begin to move, to just begin to move, you, you must apply a force called <clears throat> a, a static force because this object is stationary. So to get this object to move, we must apply a static force, which will overcome a static what? Friction, a static friction. This is the, 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 the first one. Now, remember we still have got normal reaction and W, which means our static uh, force um, is what we need to get the object to just begin to move. Whereas when the object is already in motion, in, in, in other words, it's already moving, to keep it moving, we, we apply a kinetic force that will overcome our kinetic friction. So to get an object to move, you apply a static force. And when it's already in motion, you're only applying what? A kinetic force. Now, it's, it's you need much more effort in order to get the object to do what? In order to get the object to, to move, meaning that static for, uh, force will be bigger than the kinetic force. It, when an object is already in motion, it's easier to keep it moving, but it's more difficult to begin the process of moving it. So this one is lesser. Now, how do we calculate uh, this? How do we calculate this? Um, All right. <clears throat> so we come to a point of something called a coefficient of friction. Now, a coefficient of friction is a ratio, and it's a symbol like that. Coefficient of friction is the ratio of your frictional force over the normal 
Hadi eksi. Alright. So the frictional force over the normal reaction. So this is the coefficient of friction. Now there are two types of coefficient of frictions. Now remember, I said you need you need a, there's more friction when the surfaces are not uh, in motion, and there is not less friction, but the, the coefficient of friction will differ when the object is in motion. So the coefficient of friction will differ when the object is in motion and when the object is not in motion. In other words, we're going to have a coefficient of friction on the static, which is going to be the frictional force static over the normal reaction. And then we're going to have a coefficient of friction uh, kinetic over the, okay, this one is kinetic uh, coefficient of friction over the normal reaction. So these are the two coefficient of frictions when the object is in motion and when the object is standing still. Sorry for that. <laughs> All right, let's look at an example of uh, this. Guys, this is the most important formula. And I believe that you are, you are the, there's no equation that you are going to solve without going through this equation. Okay, and always keep in mind what equilibrium. We are talking about balancing forces here. So now we go to this question. <clears throat> a grossly trolley with a mass of, so I'm going to write the data there. Can I use a red? 10 kilograms. Let's look at uh, the force is applied. A force of, okay, again, it's important for us to note again, rest on an horizontal plane. We said we are going to do a horizontal plane for this um, session. Let's try to keep it as short as possible. A force of 45 is applied and it's just enough to set it, is to set the object in what? In motion. It's, it's just to set it into motion. It's not in motion. So in other words, it starts from standing still. So that force is the frictional force under static 45 Newton. Somebody would say a force of is applied. Why are we not saying this is force applied? We said they are equal. The applied force and the frictional force are the same. And we don't use normally the applied force. We use the frictional force, remember, on our equation of coefficient of friction. The applied force, we are going to consider it. We are going to consider it, but let's just uh, look at this for now. On this particular question, FAP applied and the frictional force is going to be the same unless something happens. I'm going to show you that quickly. Um, okay, let me just say that before I forget. It's if AP and frictional force are equal on the horizontal, once it becomes inclined, they are not going to be equal anymore because there's going to be an extra a, 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 a W sine theta. You remember that because we are doing revision. Right, so frictional force under static is 45. Uh, while a force of 20 is required to keep it in motion. Now, that's kinetic. F-R-K. My handwriting. Kinetic, which is going to be 20 newtons. Calculate the kinetic, uh, the kinetic coefficient and the static coefficient. So we do this. Kinetic is going to be F-R, kinetic over normal reaction. But let's first find the normal reaction. Normal reaction, we said it's equal to W, and where W is equal to what? Mass, let's just write the formula, right? right let's not drop it. Mass times what? Gravity, which is equal to, let's write it there, 10 times 9,8, which becomes 98 newtons. So this is our normal reaction. And our FK is given, FRK, it's 20. We divide that by 98 which gives us my calculator right here, 20 divided by 98. Please check these answers uh, for me as well. 0, 0,2, 0, 4. No, no unit because they are both in newtons, newtons, they cancel off. B, the static one, is frictional force of the static now, over the normal, re normal reaction is constant. It's constant anyway. Um, it's 45. 
over 98. What do I get there? 0, 0,5459. So you see there's more coefficient coefficient of uh, friction where on the on the static than on the kinetic. That's what we were discussing earlier. On. So this will give you some marks. Now, before I go to the next question, um let me do something because probably as much as we are doing revision, people may not understand this. Let's look at an oblique force. Let's look at an oblique force. If I apply a force on this object in this fashion, okay, let me just grab something quickly. I'm going to paste it here. Just hold on. Here's a typical example of, a, of an oblique force. It's when a force is applied at an angle. So in other words, this force has got two components. As you can see here in the vector diagram, it has got two components. There's a component vertically, and there's a component horizontally. So now <clears throat> that vertical component uh, is due to the fact that the force is being applied in that direction, which means there's going to be a vertical force and a vertical and a horizontal force. So in our calculations, we're only going to consider the vertical and the horizontal only, not the oblique force. So how do we then calculate? The, the horizontal force. Make sure that the angle is on the x-axis and your horizontal force will be the force uh, cos theta and then the vertical will be the, the force multiplied by or sine, pardon me, sine. Sine theta. All right. Um, yes, these will be the two forces that we are going to be having. So we are going to use this and that instead of that force that is given there as an oblique force. That's how we resolve them. So in other words, if the object is being pushed down, our 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 forces are going to be like this. You're gonna have your 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 vertical component going down. You know, you're gonna you're gonna have your horizontal component going to the to the left. Still, this is going to be your W, sorry, your force, this force, F sine, theta, this one would be your F core. Uh, why am I, am I, am I, am I, let me do that again. This one will still be your F because it's your horizontal cos theta. This one, uh, your vertical will be your F sine, the theta, yes. So, provided that our, our angle obviously is on the X axis. Right, so let's go to the next question again and, and look at how to apply the information that I've just given you. A block with a mass of 35 kilograms rests on a horizontal plane. The coefficient of friction between the object and the plane is 0, 0.42. The force applied, now the force applied makes an angle of 20 with the horizontal. There we go. There's the force that is applied, making an angle of what? Of 20 with the uh, 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 horizontal. Calculate the force required to set the block in motion. Remember, you are, you, you, you're just trying to get the block to be in motion, meaning that uh, F, um, R is equal to F applied. Just getting it into motion. So we are looking for that FA or FR, in this case, they are, they, they are equal. Only on an incline, this thing is going to differ. So since we are on the horizontal, they are equal, guys. Don't forget that. Uh, what's happening now? Right. Let's go now and see how is this going to affect our drawings. All right. Now, calculate the first T, so in other words, our force is going to be T uh, if the object makes an angle of 20 with the horizontal, which is already given. Here's the diagram. So which means since the object is going up, the vertical is also going to go up and the horizontal is going to go to the right. As T cos 20, there's going to be T sine 20. 
So we're gonna be using that. Now, remember we have got a force of 35 kilograms, which gives us the W of what? It's mg, 35 times 9,8 gives us that 34, three newtons, the one that you see here on the diagram. Now, remember this is pulling, that is why the arrow is going outwards. Number two is pushing, meaning the arrow will go inwards. So let's get that force, um, guys. Now, remember, coefficient of friction is equal to the frictional force all over the normal reaction. Now, in this case, how much is our normal reaction? Because what are we looking for? We are looking for the frictional force. So let's cross multiply. So we're gonna say our frictional force, remember frictional force is equal to the applied force, I mean, uh, the frictional force is going to be equal to uh, times normal reaction, right? So we are given the coefficient of friction, the normal reaction, how much is gonna be our, our normal reaction? Now remember equilibrium, let me just put the thing over there, equilibrium. Force is going up is equal to the force is going down. Force is going up here is nr plus t sine theta is equal to the force is going down with three, four, three. So these two forces are going up and up. I said equilibrium guys, is equal to the one force that is going down. So we are looking for, for NR. So what must we do? Take that to the other side. NR is equal to 343 minus T sine theta. This becomes my equation. What else am I looking for? What else am I looking for? Um, I, I will have to find what the, um, the frictional force. Let's just let's let's just leave this formula the way it is here. Just leave this formula the way it is there. And then I'm looking for N, NR, I've got frictional force. Force is going to the left. It's equal to the force is going to the, to the right equilibrium. Which force goes to the left? This is, is our frictional force. Which one goes to the right? Is T cos theta, which means I also have got the second e equation for for FR. Now I substitute these things here. FR, I said it's T cos theta, which is 20, all over the normal reaction, which I said it's 3 for 3 minus T sine 20. Remember there, we are given that 0, 0,42. That's 0, 0,42 there. Now what do we do? Let's cross multiply. It's going to be T cos 20 is equal to 0, 0,42 into 343 minus T sine 20. Okay. Then how much is um, cos 20? Make sure the calculator is in degrees, please. Cos 20 would be 0, 0,9394 and dot 4. T is equal to, let's open the bracket, 343 times 0, 0,42, I get a value of 144,06 minus, uh, what is sine 20? Sine 20 is 0, 0,342, I multiply it by 0, 0,42. Please confirm this, this, this calculation, I'm just doing it. Roughly here, yeah. one, four, four, T. Now I'm solving for T. I just take this one across, it becomes a plus. So 0, 0,94 T plus 0, 0,144 T is equal to 144,06. Then if I add the two, sorry, I get 0, 0,9, 0, 0,94 plus um, 0, 0,144, I get 1, 0,084 T is equal to 
then t is equal to i divide that 144,06 by i get 132,8 nine seven newton so this is my force when an object is going where it's being pulled but what happens when the object is being pushed for b please confirm these calculations for me now when you push it down this is what we have we have got the vertical component going down and the, and the horizontal component going to the left and remember frictional force always opposes the the motion that is why it, it, it goes against the, the motion. Because when you push it here, we expect the object to move in that direction. So frictional force will oppose that motion. So we start again. What, what did we say? Frictional force is equal to uh, so the coefficient of friction is frictional force over the normal reaction. And then let's get our, our equation. We go back to equilibrium upward forces is equal to downward forces please this is mainly what we're going to be doing all all throughout this um topic now upward forces are and are it's the only one going up because this one is going down together with that one is equal to t sine 20 plus 3 Four, three. This is our equation of NR. Now, after up and down, we look at left being equal to what? Right. Now, the one going to the left um, is what? Left, left, left would be the T cos 20. So it's important to draw this thing accurately because T cos 20 is going to the, yes, and then FR is going to the right frictional force we have an equation again a frictional force what do we do just substitute over here 0 0.42 is equal to frictional force we said it is t cos 20 all over t sine 20 plus 3 4 we cross multiply you still get t cos 20 is equal to 0 0.42 into t sine 20 plus 343. Now, we said to t cos 20, I just, okay, let me just go back to that. Previous, t cos 20 was 0 0.940. T is equal to, let's open the bracket here. We found out that we're going to have O. 144,06 144,06 which is this and that and then plus because it's all positive now plus what what did you have there you can also just double check this 0, 0,1440 which will be 0, 0,42 and the sine 20 then what do we do we just group again. So this one will now subtract. So when we subtract 0 0.94 minus 0 0.144, now gives us oh, 0 0.7. Please, guys, I didn't do this pre. So I, my answers, if I punch a calculator wrong, please just make sure that you, you double check for, for me. But the methods are very much correct. So 144,066 divided by 0 0.796, you get 180,98. So this is our force when we are pushing it, and this is our force when you are pulling it. Makes sense, right? When you are pulling something, you raise it up a little bit up on the ground, which means the friction will be lesser. But when you are pushing it, you are pressing it down, which means the friction will even more, will even be more. That is why you need a greater force when you are pushing it than a force when you are pulling it right. So these are the two uh, equa uh, 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 um, questions that you are going to get on the 
horizon in that that's how you treat them now we are going to do the 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 the, the inclined ones uh, after this just go through the previous question papers of of this questions and then um it also go through the inclined ones but this is the process don't forget do not forget everything that we do here we must observe equilibrium that is the most important concept observe equilibrium when i say observe equilibrium you must always understand that the upward forces are equal to the what downward forces the forces to the left are equal to the forces to the to the right so that you can get your equation to substitute on the uh, equation here coefficient of friction on all equations on all even the incline will be doing the same thing same thing same thing what is important is that we must first um, note we must first note this equation coefficient of friction is fr over a normal reaction and then we must find the normal reaction and the frictional force using the up and down and the left and right okay that is basically uh, basically the gist of the matter here all right let me pause the video here stop the video here so that we can prepare for the next video whereby we're going to be doing our intro